for uh, this day, Father, for this board and, uh, Lord, the interest that uh, we all have in our schools, Father, and in the students and, uh, of this county. Father, and we just pray in the coming year that you would give us discernment, Father, and help us to make uh, the best and right decisions for everyone involved, Lord. And we ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everybody will sign in. Mine's not working, is yours? No, not yet. Is yours working, Crystal? No, not just yet. wait a second. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my guest this evening is Kinley Koontz, and with her is Hannah Self. Uh, Kinley is a freshman at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and she is the former uh, student representative uh, for Knox County Schools, and Hannah is the current uh, student representative for Knox County Schools. Um, so Hannah is, uh, or Kinley is gonna speak uh, this evening on uh, student representation uh, in Knox County. Let's please give her a warm welcome. Thank you, Noah. Good evening. My name is Kelly Coons, and I reside in Knox County. Um, first off, a little bit about student representation in Knox County and how that goes over, and in hopes that you will consider having student representation on your board as well. So, first off, a student representative is a non voting, appointed, rising high school senior that serves as a liaison between the school board and the student body. Um, the student purpose on the board is to provide a student perspective on the policies so that you all as a board can make a wholly informed decision with student input in mind. The student representative <coughs> is selected through a two-step process here in Knox County. Um, first, it's with a paper application, and through that is graded, and then five students are selected for an interview process, which is then appointed the student representative. If you have any questions about how it works for Knox County, I'd be happy to answer this later on. Um, but the responsibilities of the student representative are to equi equitably present, represent all students in the district, provide thoughtful feedback on the impact of school board policies on student and student groups, speak with student governments and other school groups to inform students on the policies that concern them, and to serve as a responsible student leader in the community. Regardless of the student's own um, interests, they're there to represent all the interests of the students and provide a holistic outlook on the perspective of all students in the district. Um, the benefit of having a student representative that has responsibilities listed earlier is that the board is able to be well informed about the impact and the implications of, that the policies have in day-to-day -day student life. Um, and it, oftentimes there are relevant issues that exist within students' um, daily lives that are, can often be overlooked within the policy making process if student voices aren't incorporated throughout that entire process. And so in addition, enabling students to have the opportunity to serve in a position like this um, enables more student leaders to be built throughout the community um, and also engages what and strengthens what really the core of education is to build the future. And so by implementing this program and creating this position, you allow students to step up to the plate and really make um, a, a very important contribution to their education. Um, and so as a previous student rep myself, um, I can not only speak to the benefit of the board, but also the benefit on the student. Um, the student is able to engage in politics in a way that otherwise would 
not be um, possible. And so it provides a really unique opportunity for students in your district to be able to come into a government facility and have a leadership role. You know, although it is not voting really appointed, it is a very unique opportunity to see how the process works and to then inform other students about different policies and really serve um, as a communicator between all of the students and the school board, building that relationship that's really important to grow in education. Um, this enables both sides to benefit and grow toward the goal of educational excellence for all. And in addition, it benefits the student by giving them experience in communication, diplomacy, leadership, and service. Um, these benefits help to grow an even stronger community, engaging all aspects and all stakeholders um, in the education process. And I hope that you guys will consider implementing this on your own school board. I know that for me, it has been an extremely beneficial process, and Hannah can speak to that as well. Um, being able to speak on things that may have not necessarily been considered if a student wasn't on the board of being represented. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak, and I'll be here if you have any questions about the process. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, <coughs> approval of the consent agenda with um, the addendum 3C1. Get a motion to approve that. So move, Madam Chair. Second. I'll second. Any discussion, questions? If not, cast your vote. I want to change the votes. Reveal the vote. Yes, Blanche. Yes, Henry. Yes, James. Yes, Lysol. Yes, Lester. Yes, Miller. Yes, Morgan. Yes, Smith. Yes, motion pass. Need a motion for the approval of the regular agenda. Yes. I make a motion to amend the regular agenda for some policy modifications on last reading. Okay. Uh, with regards to policy 5.802, um, upon some more research, I recommend that we stay with our current policy that you all, the board adopted on November 14, 17, and just adopt the changes that TSB recommended last year and it will be under personnel administration 78. Um, it informs the Office of Educator License, licensing of licensed educator who have been suspended or dismissed, who have resigned following allegations of conduct, including sexual misconduct, which is substantiated with warrant consideration for licensure and suspension or revocation, or who have been convicted of felony. The report shall be submitted within 30 days of the suspension, dismissal, or resignation for a receiving knowledge of the felony conviction. I recommend we add that to our current policy. Is that just an addition? Just an addition. Yeah. And then with regards to policy 4.700, um, the director contacted me and informed me of the uh, percentages she would like on weighing TCAP scores. And that would be um, subheading A, grades three through five, would be five percent. Subheading B, grades six through eight, ten percent. And subheading C, grades nine through 12, 15 percent. And that's at her recommendation. Is that correct? Yes. yes. And the 15 percent is also at the state recommendation. It can be 15 to 25 percent. Will, will we discuss these more? This is just to approve the agenda. This is just to approve the agenda. <coughs> Yes, Madam Chair, um, there's another amendment we need to do, and it is on uh, policy number 2802. It's on our agenda as first and final reading, but our policy um, 1.600 says that all of our policy changes need a second reading, and I talked
talked to Jeff and Jennifer about this before the meeting. So um, the only uh, thing that other thing that you can do if it's deemed urgent or it's an emergency, you can do it on the first reading. But after talking with Jennifer and Jeff, uh, they um, they feel like that we're okay with it to just make this amendment to say uh, instead of first and final to strike out uh, first and and just put first struck out and final and just put on the first reading. That was 2802? Yes, uh-huh. It's C. And that's the policy that has to do with the payroll procedures. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so I need a second for that correct you. Need a second for Mr. Miller's motion. I second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, cash it up. Sorry, I wasn't moving on. Okay. Anyone like to change the votes? We'll build both. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Burge, yes. Edward, yes. James, yes. Russell, yes. Lester, yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't mean to. Well, I can abstain. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to be yes. I, I did hit the yellow, did okay. Oops. I've only been on here two years. <laughs> so be patient with me. <laughs> Technology. Okay, comments from the chair. Um, First thing I want to say is um, this morning I had the pleasure of going up to Valley View to see the murals they had, the um, Gail Hinton had done over Christmas break. Um, I highly recommend anybody going up there and seeing those. Um, pictures do not do it justice. And seeing the expressions on the kids' faces as they were huddled up in little corners looking at it and just doing and on, it just really something to see. <clears throat> um, and second, um, we need to decide on the committee. We had discussed or, um, about the evaluation, getting those finalized. So has anybody got a date in mind they would like to do? We would need to do it at least the, the um, last of January or the first. The, the calendar. You mean the actual evaluation? No, I mean the, the committee. committee. Mm -hmm. It would need to be the last of January and the first of February. So that. Is anybody good with next week or even the next? Do I have any preferences, times? This is the retired side. Uh, you guys have any preferences? Um, they, I think Monday is um, is Monday the 14th is when the path to correct uh, is in Knoxville the academy. <coughs> Next Tuesday. Earlier left. What time? You tell me time. Five. So next Tuesday at five. Downstairs. You get that? Yes, Okay. And that is. Well, last month I was going to mention to see with the time change if anybody wanted to change our regular meetings until five o'clock, um, but that would only be one more month. So it's up to you all, whatever you all want to do with that. Oh, Madam Chair, before we leave that. Um, that is um, five o'clock. Where at the central office? Central office downstairs. And um, what day? And what about the committee? 
each of you appointed a committee or just anybody that wants to be on it can come yeah it would be a good just to have a board wide workshop yeah mm -hmm. committee mm -hmm. that's Tuesday. so that's Tuesday the 15th at 5 o'clock and that is all I have um, next is the director's monthly report Okay, I would like to give an update of, on the status of White Oak Elementary. Uh, I did purchase umbrellas to at least deliver to the school, so they do have umbrellas and storage containers to keep out in the modular unit and inside the building for when they travel. And uh, we're still waiting a call from uh, Michael Brady to hear when he can come and uh, do an on-site visit. He did say he would get back with me at the beginning of the year. We reached out to him, still have not heard from anyone from the company. But Ambrose McDonald, they uh, are available to come up on Monday. The cost for that would be $3,000 to do an on-site visit. And in the packets that I gave you, the letter for what that consists of is in your packet. Uh, also, the Raptor system has been installed. It is in our schools. It will be fully functioning uh, on uh, January 19th. It has been tried out in some of the schools and training has taken place uh, this week. So uh, everything seems to be going well with that. Also, I would like to acknowledge the murals at Valley View Elementary. That was uh, it just beyond words, I want to say thank you to Ms. Woodard for providing the funds for the cafeteria and for uh, Mr. Dotson, the principal at Valley View Elementary, for providing the funds uh, for the mural in the gym. And thank you to uh, Mr. Miller, who put a lot of time and heart and soul into the vision that you had for the school in your district, uh, that's greatly appreciated. And I agree with Ms. Creekmore. Uh, the, the reaction the students had was just amazing. They, they gravitated toward certain things in the cafeteria. Uh, it was just something to see. And like I said, it had nothing to do with central office. We had no part in that other than the funding. So it's nice to see leadership arise in other areas of our district, whether that be our teachers, our board members, our community members. And a special thank you to uh, uh, Gail Hinton. She spent 11 days working over our Christmas break. And you know, when you think of 11 days that she was willing to give up to come and do that to provide a uh, lifetime of imagination and enjoyment for these students uh, is greatly appreciated. So a big thank you to everyone who had a part to play in that. And I also want to update everyone on the memorial plaque for Connor Lane. We have uh, contacted three different uh, places to see what the school would like. Uh, they're waiting to hear from the parent to see what picture they may want on that so that is in progress but it um, is still in the planning phase all my comments okay recognize jeff's substitute the first one is the Rule 41 Meal Public School Fund. Cash for the question is $9,182,519. The revenues are at 40.7%. Expenditures at 37.4%. The Rule 42 School Federal Project Fund. Cash for the question is 205599 Revenues and expenditures both are at 31.3%. And the 143 Central Cafeteria Fund cash to the trustee is $328,776. Revenues are at 38.1%. And the 143 are at 36.2%. Does anyone have any questions? 
Okay, motion. A motion to approve those? I'll make that motion. Second. Second the motion. <laughs> Any further discussion? Questions? Not cast your vote. Anyone want to change their vote that they know of? If not, reveal the vote. Everyone, yes. Thank you. Okay, the next we have items for action consider addition of a student representative to the Campbell County School Board. Madam Chair. This is an idea that I've had for uh, a couple of years now. Um, and speaking with Kinley um, and getting some stuff together, I've printed off and put before you two, uh, P two packets, I guess. One is a staple packet, which would be the application um, information sheet. Um, it's seven pages long. Um, goes into depth about the role, the uh, eligibility, the responsibilities of the student representatives. Um, but the purpose, I think, is that we need more student representation on our board uh, to ensure that we have student insight and student opinions that are heard in our policy making decisions. Um, so with that in mind, I um, set out to form like, an overview and a policy. So basically, it would take one student representative from Camel County High School and one from Jellicoe High School. Um, and both, uh, they would fill out the application packet um, and make sure all of the completed uh, items in the packet are completed. Um, uh, and then drop it off by April 5th of this year. Um, this would be the first year that they, the, this position, both positions would start. Um, we would uh, form a committee, a select committee of no more than five, five members, um, as well as the director of the student um, student representatives and the principal of each high school. Um, and they'd be selected by June 1st and they would assume office on August 1st. Um, each, uh, applica each applicant will receive an interview um, and if one high school fails to have any applicants then both positions can be filled um, by the same high school. Um, but their term would expire upon graduation um, or by the first uh, June 1st of each year. Um, but it, it outlines uh, the one sheet that's front and back kind of outlines it over review and policy, um, and then the other is an application sheet, information sheet that the student would have to fill out um, to, in order to apply. Um, but basically it's a non-voting member who can provide discussion um, in times, uh, you know, as they like. I'd provide student input on uh, policies and implementations or ideas, um, but uh, I encourage uh, the board to uh, um, expand student opportunities uh, and let's grow some student leaders, more student leaders here in Campbell County. And I think this is a big step forward to ensure that is possible. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I'm open for questions or discussion or whatever uh, the board is. Uh, um, I would just like to add that several years ago, we had a junior board members um, as members of this board. Uh, we did five and it was a little, uh, wound up being a little bit too many so I like the idea of the two um, but it was wonderful and it was just what Noah has said that it is it involves the students and get we we just get feedback from them and uh, you know th their perception of things so I highly um, recommend it as well and in my travelers travels as East District Director a lot of the systems that I went to had one or two representatives there and I love the idea. Chooses the representatives that they fill out an application. Yes, yes. Um, principal correct. Well, this um, I made this seven-page application sheet, um, and it's a it's a model off of uh, another system uh, around us. And basically, they would fill this out, and they have the option to fax, email, or drop it off by central office. And then uh, we would collect those and award interview times to each of those applicants, and then multiple possible applicants. Correct. There would be a, a select committee of five school board members. 
members, student uh, representatives, director, and then the principal of the high school, uh, and they would be able to vote. Good idea. And uh, Noah, I, we did have a sponsor. One board member was a sponsor that worked. That's something we can discuss later, but that worked out well too. So they would have a main contact person. Correct. It sounds like a great idea to me to get the young guys involved, and I, I, I like it. Just like uh, Faye said, the sponsor, um, that is the, basically I labeled it as the student representative's director, um, yes, but it would be a yes, board same member thing. who is yes, the uh -huh. director. Oh, that's good. Who would choose the board members? It would be, I mean, that's up to discussion. We can, it doesn't, whoever wants to, I guess, or. And if you have more than five. Well, that's, we can change it to five. I just threw that number in there just so it's not too hectic um, because if you've got ten people and they're trying to decide on one person, it can be kind of hectic. But we can change that. I am up, all up for just whoever wants to be on it. That's fine with me. I'm, you can say minimum of five. Minimum. Let's do that. Minimum. Yeah. Everybody would have the opportunity to voice or vote and all that. So... What's the word pleasure in question? Madam Chair, I will make a motion to adopt um, this as is, except changing the uh, minimum to five school board members. Uh, but I make a motion to adopt as is. And I would love to say a second that. I know it's my third second, but I would love to be a part of this student. Any other? That's probably just a comment, a good reason to have a young board member, because I wouldn't have thought of that, but it's, it's a great idea. Thank you. Okay, there's no other discussion. Cast your vote. Anyone like to change the votes? We have a vote. Three more, yes. Burge, yes. Heatherly, yes. James, yes. Lastly, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion pass. Okay. And item B, consider revising the board policies from January 2018 due to changes in state law. <coughs> Those are 4.603, promotion and retention, 4.605, graduation requirements, 4.606, graduation activities, 5.802, qualifications and duties of director of schools, 6.2, Attendance, 6.319. Alternative school programs, 6.405 medicines. And consider adopting the following from 2008, January 2018 due to changes in state law. Second reading, 5.203. Recommendations and file transfers, 6.504051. Uh, the Dystatin. <laughs> Uh, and then the 6.4052 opiate, and then 5.118 background investigation. Any discussion on that? Can I ask, what is the graduation activities? What was updated in that one? I can't. Uh, I can't remember because that was the one of the first ones we looked at. And these are mandated by, by changes in state law? No, okay. Board of Education changes. What did they change in 5.802? Do you know, Jeff, the qualifications for the director? And we just discussed that. It was that oh. paragraph on the director reporting any. Oh, I got you. Okay. okay. All right. Clarifies reporting. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. So when we make our motion, we just need to make the motion to include that amended language on that and the other one. Yes, that's good. Okay. Any more discussion? Yes. <coughs> 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 
school. And are we required to have that at each school? What what is the deal? We're adopting the policy to have it. At each school. Yeah. Two two balls. Is this just for high schools or it's every school? For every school. It's every school, and there will be someone trained at every school okay. to administer that. That was my question. It doesn't have to be a nurse. You can train anybody. Yes. Okay. Your SROs or anybody? Yeah. Jeffrey, I yes. have that policy, but I don't remember the exact. Well, it says that uh, expand the variety of student awards and achievements that must be noted at graduation. Um, I was just curious to see what it entailed. I can get with you on that. Wait, I got it. I got it. What have you found? Um, well, I've got our policy and then the update. Okay. Yeah. Basically saying uh, procedures to ensure students are recognized graduation for the following achievements, honor, state honor, state distinction, district distinction, tri-star scholar, students receiving a Tennessee seal of biliteracy, um, community service, gold platinum medal, um, basically just expands the achievements. That's, okay. okay. I need a motion if there's no further discussion. Do a second. Pass your vote. Would anyone like to change the vote? Ms. Gale. Yes, Burge, yes, Heatherly, yes, James, yes, Lastly, yes, Wester, yes, Miller, yes, Morgan, yes, Smith, yes, Matthew, yes. Madam Chair, could I just add one comment to this? Um, all of our policies in our policy manual are to be reviewed in a year's time. And just a reminder to the board, at the top left, um, or it may be the top right, um, but anyway, at the top of the page, it says which policies are to be reviewed, light review in uh, January and down the line. And by the end of the year, we have personally, each school board member has personally read every policy. And we really do need to be on top of that and, and review as individuals all of those policies. And also, we need to uh, tell the people in our community that these policies are online under the Campbell County Board of Education website. And a lot of times I've referred parents and people that have called, you know, about our, some of our actions. And if you are familiar with that, you can refer them to that. And, and it solves a lot of, a lot of, of problems. Okay. <clears throat> Item C, um, consider revising policy 2.802, payroll procedures on the first. And I know now why we added that second, because the policy that is online is not being followed. So we were changing it in line with what is being done, and that's why we wanted it for first and second. Mr. Marlowe got with us, and, you know, we're not, he's under the Financial Management Act, and we were operating on a policy that the board had passed years ago that was not in line with what he was doing. Yeah. And we, we need to get in line. So this is a recommendation of Jeff Marlowe, and I fully support it. And we actually, he is the finance director. Mm -hmm. He sits the, under the 1981 Financial Management Act. We have no say, so we have to be in line with what he's doing, and our policy did not reflect that. And it just created confusion among the employees. Yeah, employees. So do we need to do that first and second reading? Uh, I referred to the policy, air policy 1.600, I believe it is, an and it does say that our, our policy says that all of our, our changes are to be first and second readings unless you go down to the part that says unless it's urgent or an emergency. You're not following the policy. But we need to follow the policy. That's we my point. So that one. Uh, yeah. if I would be in order, I would like to make a motion that we uh, pass um, revising this policy 2802 with the amendments to strike out final reading and do the first reading. Madam Chair. Yes. 
Are we appropriate to be doing policy that's not following the financial management act? No. So do you recommend we do this on first and final? I don't think so. I think that would be Thank honestly, you. I, would, you know, I can't speak for you handle it. I think that's what you'd recommend. Okay, I have a question. What we're doing basically here is requiring everybody to have direct deposit, correct? Yes. Well, and it's getting in line with everything that we do. Yeah. Well, but I mean, the, I read that act. It says nothing about direct deposit. Have we polled any of our employees? How many employees, and teachers, and staff do we have that, that get checks? Does anybody know? Direct deposit is the majority of our payroll. Well, I'm, I'm certain of that. Yes. Um, I would, okay, I, I'm just a little concerned about, you know, the hardship we might be causing for some of the employees that don't live close to a bank. Maybe, maybe none. Maybe, you know, we do direct deposit, everything we do, I understand it, but I'm personally a little hesitant to do it. Well, it's just first reading. We have to discuss it again, right? We'd have to prove it in, or are you saying this is our vote and that's it? It's, it don't just pertain to the payroll. We're, the way when during the holiday, the teachers did not receive their pay, you know, as they, as our policy said. Mr. Marlowe pays a different time on that. And it created huge confusion. And, you know, the employees were referring to our policy and it didn't matter to him. He said he's going to do it his way and he has that right under the financial management. So this revision includes that, which is what is important, and the payroll, that, you know, having a... The, right the current policy says they have a choice um, right. mm -hmm. whether to get paid once a month, twice a month, or, I mean, it was... So this policy gets it in line with what we're, what's actually being done, correct? Yes. And just adds the direct deposit. And if I understood them correctly, they're asking to do that county, in the county departments. Is that right, Rusty? And they yeah. Are they asking or are they? Lisa. Mandating. They're mandating it by April the 1st for all county employees. For their approval. When we, uh, when Jeff and I talked to um, Jennifer at the beginning of the meeting and discussed the time frame, uh, there would not be an urgency if we did it this month. First reading, second month would be February, so you would still have March and April to get it prepared in in place. That's my thinking. It's okay with me either way, but. Well, in speaking with Mr. Marlowe, he wanted it ready to go by April 1st. So I'm sure you would need time to prepare and enter information of banking information. He also would have to give employees time to turn the doors in to the payroll department. And if some, and if some people should not have a bank account, they would have to do that. And now most people would have a bank account because it's required by TCRS or Social Security now, so it's just preparing them to have a bank account. I'm not aware what the problem is. So we're not calling the policy. Weather, right. Yes. Jeff wants the policy changed, not for direct deposit, right. but for how he pays employees. I have no problem with that. And then I know we're others, I've reached out to right. other school I'm systems. I'm a little bit. And the school systems I spoke with, they they're, do they're direct the deposit. Anderson County. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This. Vicki, I would be interested. Go ahead. No. In how this requirement for direct deposit, would that have any impact on any of your employees that you know of? What we're talking about is this policy change that requires every school employee to have direct deposit. Yes, yes. I, I want polling them requirement. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was more concerned with. One thing that I will say, uh, we came, central office staff and I went in last Friday because that was a payroll day. We were not in school and we came in, only 15 people came in to pick up checks. Okay. Well, I mean, I know that's a tree and everybody requires it, so I just have those questions. Um, Madam Chair, if I could just ask Karen, um, would it make a difference in your office whether you did this second reading in February? Would it be better if we deemed this an emergency and changed the, the vote to do it tonight, first and final? Because we can do it either way. And the only reason I brought it up is because we need to do it according to our policy. So it would be better for finance department if we deemed it urgent and then passed it tonight. <clears throat> Is that what? Okay. Then, Madam Chair, if um, I would be in order, I will change my um, motion. Okay. And we'll have to vote to change it back because we voted to change it. So. Let me say something. I, I'm confused. I might have missed something. But did I understand you to say that the finance department said this is something we had to do? Mm -hmm. Then why are we putting it off? I mean. Well, we're just following, following policy to do first and second readings for policy changes. Yeah, but, have to do it. but if we deem it um, urgent or an emergency, we can change. You know, we can change that vote back. Well, it's not long for April, so. Madam Chair. Yes. And the main point is, we're not following the director of finances. You know, we're out of line on policy. So that, to me, seems urgent, and we need to get in line with what he's doing. Well, definitely. Is. Sure, uh, is that a liability where we're out of line? And okay, I have one more question. It says that certified personnel will have the option of either 10, 11, or 12 month installments. So we're saying a teacher can decide to get paid over 12 months, or some can no, decide to get paid over 10 months. That's what we were saying. It's not in line with current procedure. Is right, this, this is current procedure? No, that's the old. Oh, that's the old. Oh, that's the one. Oh, read the new. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. So what? How do we need to fix this? Okay. So would I need I mean, our that's attorney? Cool. Would you so. advise us? Do I need to just uh, make a motion to cancel out? that original vote to approve the motion with the whole agenda change. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I will amend yes. my motion and make another motion, not amend it, but make another, withdraw that and say that I make a motion that we go back to the original um, reading first and final and withdraw that correction that we did just first. Madam Chair. I don't, I don't believe we voted on the... Uh, we voted we to change it to make it first uh, reading only at the beginning right. of the meeting. The first oh, reading only. Oh, correct. Mm. And you're wanting to change it back to first and final. Well, if yes. And if we do that, then, you know, we have to make a motion to do Technically, that. we'll have to suspend the rules and amend the agenda again. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do that. Let's... Okay. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. I second that motion. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any discussion? Okay, now I'll make my motion. But well, we have to vote on that. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll get it. Okay, cast your, if there's no running. My question is, <coughs> at the end of the school year, is they're getting their summer checks, will they all go in at that time, or will they get checks every two weeks to the summer? So I'll go in so this vote is to suspend the rules. <laughs> but it's a long time between them. I got hit first. Uh, you'd be 
like me, right? I just can't, yeah. Can I confirm it? Johnny. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Me either, Ronnie. <laughs> okay, does anybody want to change the vote? If not, reveal the vote. Okay. Okay. Now we need a motion to approve. Okay, I make a motion that we go back to the original <laughs> language that's on our agenda for first and final reading on policy 2.802. Second, second, second. <laughs> Any discussion? I hope not. <laughs> if no discussion, cast your vote. I gotta go home. This is my one. Would anyone like to change the vote? The real vote? I hope not. Craig Morgan, yes. Burge, yes. Heatherly, yes. Jackson, yes. Lastly, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Okay, item D, consider adopting policy 4.608, transcript alteration and 5.203, recommendation and file transfers, first reading. I make that motion. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Would anyone like to change the votes? Reveal the vote. Corey, yes. Burge, yes. Heatherly, yes. James, yes. Lastly, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Okay. Item E, consider revising board policies from June 2018 due to changes in state law. First reading, 5.305, Family and Medical Leave Act, 5.802. This is on there again, qualifications. And, okay. Qualification and duties of director of schools, 6.3, code of conduct, 6.309, zero tolerance, offenses, 6.314, corporal punishment, 6.409, child abuse and neglect. So we still are leaving that 5.802 as we have it with that new stuff. This will be new conditions based okay. on GSB and Okay. Any discussion? Corporal punishment. Bring it back. Bring it back. Any questions, comments? No. Okay. Get a motion. Motion to approve. Second the motion. There's no further questions or comments. Cast your vote. Would anyone like to change the vote? Reveal the vote. Greg Marsh, yes. Burge, yes. Heatherly, yes. James, yes. Lastly, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Okay, item F, consider adopting board policy from August 2018 due to changes in state law. 3.212, district water testing, 6.2001, attendance during post-secondary visits. Any discussion? Get a second. I'll second that motion. Any questions, comments? If not, cast your vote. Anyone like to change their vote? <coughs> no, we'll reveal the votes. Creedmoor, yes. Burge, yes. Heatherly, yes. 
James? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Lester? Yes. Milton? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Smith? Yes. I should pass it. Okay. Item G, consider revising board policies from August 2018 due to changes in state law. First reading. 1.701, school district planning, 4.206, special programs, homebound instruction, and 6.2, attendance. <coughs> Any questions, comments? Well, I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. If there's not any questions, comments, cast your vote. Anyone would like to change the vote? If not, reveal the vote. Creedmore, yes. Burge, yes. Heatherly, yes. James, yes. Lassen, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Okay. Item H is consider a resolution directing um, director of schools to draft a letter to State Senator Ken Yeager and State Representative Dennis Powers in opposition of any school voucher legislation. Yes. Okay. yes. Um, I brought this forward because I read a lot about it over the break and uh, it would appear that Senator Yeager is opposing school vouchers that Mr. Powers may be for it. And as we all know, these vouchers will be devastating to our school system. And I just think it's important in the world of politics that this board take it, you know, a vote and let him know that we either oppose or we're for it. So um, I'll make a motion we approve this and give our director the you know the authority to write a letter and let it, let him know that. I second that motion, and I would like to make the comment that I called uh, TSBA, and and I have their position letter that uh, you that I can email to you if you want to use it. Any other discussion? Madam Chair, just quickly, um, I was with uh, Representative Powers and Senator Yeager today, and Yeager is uh, assured me that he is against vouchers, um, but Representative Powers, I cannot say the same. Um, speaking with him today, he's still uh, in a mindset of supporting wholeheartedly school vouchers. Um, he said he not only uh, supported them for the last eight years, but that he's going to continue to support them. Um, so I think drafting uh, red, uh, this letter and resolution uh, hopefully will go a long way but uh, only time will tell, so. Well, and Dennis and I have had this conversation for many, many years, and um, he knows that a lot of our board does oppose vouchers, but when we do uh, reach out to our legislators, uh, I would hope that we would do it with, with um, kindness and respect, a respectful way, since they don't agree with our thinking. Or one of them does it, I'll put it There's no other discussion. Cast your vote. Anyone want to change the vote? Or build it up? Creedmoor, yes. Burge, yes. Henry, yes. James, yes. Lassen, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion to pass. Um, don't have anything to discuss. Legal matters. <clears throat> okay, recognize school board members. Brent? Uh, just like to thank you guys for coming. It's been a part of Thank you. Yes, uh, <clears throat> just getting back to the talk about the White Oak, I think we need to give our directors some direction. Uh, we started out as going to do a canopy, then it went to two classrooms, and then to a gymnasium. I mean, what's the intent of this board to? I mean, we got a proposal here for three thousand dollars, and I thought we were looking to see if it was a suitable site, you know, to build an addition. I mean, what's what's the intent of the board? Why spend three thousand dollars if 
I mean, what what is it we want to do? Up there? Is anybody? Yeah, I, I agree with you, John. I, I would not be in favor of spending three thousand dollars. I would think if they wanted our business, they would be willing to come up and take a look at it. And you know, maybe it doesn't work that way, but uh, I would not be in favor of that. I just I just think it, it's unfair to her to uh, not to not have some direction because we just don't need to be going throwing three thousand dollars away. I agree. And. Uh, I don't know, Stan, is, is there anybody in Campbell County that can tell us if that's a suitable side, if we were to go, go that way? Or, unless you core drill it. So, I mean, you're getting into a lot of expense, and uh, I know there's been a lot of back and forth discussions and all this, that, and the other, but at the end of the day, it comes down to whether we want to spend $2 million, you know, at White Oaks. So I just don't think it's fair for, you know, to uh, put Miss Fields in that position to, uh, you know, without some guidance from the board. And I'm certainly not for wasting money, you know, and for nothing and wind up not doing anything. So, <clears throat> and another thing I'd like to know, you know, about some funding. I know if the county commission is interested in doing it, then they need to be involved in the early on process too. Have some investment on their part, so. but that's uh, that's all I have. And I just, you know, I think you all need to let Miss Fields know before we go spend money what you know our intent is at, at the end of the day. So, but that's that's all I have. Madam Chair, Miss Fields, did we know if the Brady group is going to charge us to do it? They will charge to come out, won't they, Stan? Did we say? Yes. So our intent is to see if we can build. That was our intent. Is that right, Ms. Creekmore? I think that's what... That's what we made a motion on. The feasibility study was to see what we could or could not do in Uh I want to add this as well. Today I received a, a, a form where the teacher going out to the... Ms. Jones going out to her classroom slipped and fell. Uh, and again, this is not a situation that just arose this year. This has been in existence for several years, you know, prior to the 10 months I've been here. And the only thing I've been able to do since I found out about this in August is purchase 20 umbrellas. She still is no closer to, uh, to me, my recommendation would be to make arrangements to move her in the building somewhere. Uh, I know the principal's office was a former classroom. So as a former principal, I know I would take a back seat to a, a different location and make that a classroom again, if necessary. Because my concern is the students who are continuing to go out in this weather, and we are at the time where more our worst weather is yet to come. And we've already had one accident with the teacher going up to the uh, trailer because the ramp is uncovered. And by uncovered, I mean there is no awning. There is uh, something on the surface to provide some traction, yet she still fell. We are no closer to solving the problem than we were in August. So even if we were to do a building project, that is still at least two years down the road and we are not helping the students. Okay, my question is, and I hate to go back in the past, but when Mr. Poston was here, he told them to stay in the building, and now they got less students, and they're having to go outside the building. I don't understand that. You know, I don't know. When, when we went that, through... That trailer was closed for... When we went through the process of our building program, Donnie, or um, not Mr. Poston, but Larry said it would be about $7,000 was the number, I believe. We've got notes on it to put that canopy up. Well, that that's definitely out of it. I had not heard a $2 million number anywhere, um, but I certainly think the community is within their rights to come and make a request to the school board. Oh, absolutely. You know, so what we tend to do with it or what we determine is the best option for those parents and students and teachers, that's our responsibility. 
I do not have the technical skill or knowledge to make that decision myself, and I don't know that we can make it without engaging a professional to guide us. Um, you know, maybe after we, we end up putting a canopy, maybe, maybe that is the best solution, or maybe, but also, Jennifer, I would think that you are well within the bounds of your authority to require them to bring those kids back inside the school if you think that would be the best option at this time. I don't think you need a board approval for any of that. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't have a, I don't think we're far enough along unless we decide we're just going to build a canopy. We can, we can do that. Madam Chair, what about the computer lab? There's a computer lab every student uses in that trailer also. Where is that lab going to go? Well, they're out of room. I mean, I mean there's no question. Is $3,000 really that much to get this study done for the people of Lilo? Well, we can give them a concrete answer that we can or can't. I mean, really? Yeah, but it's not. <clears throat> if you looked on that sheet, it doesn't say anything about a suitable site. It talks about drawings. And well, we, we haven't had any conversations that I'm aware of with that firm, at least as at the board level. Um, and I would certainly be want to talk to, who was the guy we met with that one day? Chuck. Chuck, Chuck Grant. Grant. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, you know, to have a conversation with Chuck. Um, but I would not be for paying anybody money up front for just a proposal. So was there a um, meeting discussion at last meeting to get an architect to come and give us the options? Was you, that you can correct me. I don't, I don't think we voted on that, did we? we? We discussed it, and we were going to get with Mr. Grant after... The board just asked me to read yeah. up to okay. the architects. And, and let's have a discussion I, with him. Yes, and that was in December. Then uh, we went on Christmas break. So when I talked to them, they said they would contact me after the first of the year. Right, okay. And Ambrose did contact, and that was <clears throat> their response. We have not heard back from Chuck. So I don't know what his response. You know, is. that was just my update to the board. And, and I'm Clear. I'm confident that all the board would agree that we want to do what we can to help those kids in the best way we can. But I, I don't know what that is. Well, what? So, I mean, we're wasting enough money to spend a canopy. Uh, what's it cost to build a canopy? And can we build a canopy up there without without the fire marshal's approval? I don't know. So you know, that's another thing to get into. I mean, it wouldn't be the, the current. The gravel's too steep going up to there, and it's then you'd have to move dirt. And so, I mean, whatever we do, it's going to be. Yeah, but I I wasn't throwing numbers around, Steve. On the yeah. two million, the we had got a cost on four additional classrooms at Caribou, and it was it was a million. Mr. Orchestra's chairman is around eight hundred thousand. So half I of that would be four hundred. It's going to cost a million half to build a gym. So, I mean, is that our intent as a board? Is that what? <laughs> what we want to do. And so we took action last <clears throat> month for an architect to come and do a feasibility report. Uh, I would like, uh, Mr. Birds, for us to maybe have a building committee meeting and we can discuss, you know, when the whole board come and, and let's, let's see. You know, I, would that be... That's fine with me, you know. I, I, I think that would be, you know, time well spent myself. Okay, I'll, I'll set one up. Uh, okay. Just, uh, I'll get with Gail. Set one up the next couple of weeks. Bye. Um, two things. Um, I, check, I got an update from Washington today from NSBA that with the government shut down, that the E rate and Jackins, is he still here? Um, he could speak on that, but the good news is that it is not affecting the E rate, which has to do with the communications and phone bills and all of that. And the other thing is, um, I talked to Lisa today. She's in Key West, Florida, enjoying.
bring in the sun, sunshine and she asked that I tell everybody happy new year and that she would miss everybody being here tonight and the third thing is on the 17th there is going to be a finance academy from TSBA it's a seven hour academy that I would highly highly recommend that we all go to and um, they take they take the worksheets they break it down line item by line item and explain to you how the finance company comes up with all of those figures so if you could work it in your schedule just call gail she will make reservations it, i think it's going to be at the holiday inn is it the same as that pathway to progress yeah well, and I do appreciate the young ladies coming from UT tonight to speak. No. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for coming and speaking tonight. Um, I want to thank Jack, too. Uh, he left, but for uh, getting Raptor installed over break. Um, I was uh, in communications with him over break, and it, was, it seemed like everything was going smoothly, so I uh, applaud him for that. Um, just a quick note, there are two uh, items in the green um, folder that Miss Fields uh, sent out um, from Trimble, a security company. Um, I met, Miss Fields and I met with Trimble uh, back in December. Um, Trimble and I went around <coughs> to the schools and Stan can speak to more, more of this if, if he wants, but uh, basically these proposals are to add uh, keyless entry to uh, all, the, all the schools in the uh, county. Um, two of them one proposal is to have two at each school and, one, and the other one is to have one um, at each school. But if you have any questions, um, just something to keep on your radar uh, for consideration. Um, but I think it's a good step uh, in terms of security and safety um, that uh, that we should take uh, in the future. Um, but uh, I think that's it. I was just uh, in Nashville talking uh, to some legislators about vouchers and uh, the debate is far from over. Um, but I think and I appreciate uh, Mr. Miller for putting that up tonight because I think taking a stance is uh, one step in the right direction. Um, and I'm excited to attend the finance workshop on Thursday yes. as well as the Pastor Promises on Tuesday. So, thank you. Bye. And to me. Um, I just want to say briefly that um, we had a very special day today at Valley View. Um, I was very humbled and proud to be a part of it. Um, it just shows what a little bit of vision can do for a community. And um, I thank Ms. Fields, Ms. Creekmore, Ms. Woodard. And um, if you could have seen the, the, the look on them kids' face this morning when they come in, it's one of them that will stay with you forever. Um, it was a great thing. We had Channel 6 there. And um, we got a little positivity on our community and our school system today that I really liked. And... Um, Again, I appreciate everyone that helped make it happen, and um, I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of it. So thank you. Steve? I've said too much. Okay. We'll see you next month. Meeting adjourned. Everybody says amen to that. <laughs> amen. That's right. Hey, Stan. Come here.